I'm Clay Carlino and I do stuff. And in this video, I'm changing the emergency brakes on a vehicle that has discs in the rear. <laughs> I, I just said discs in the rear. <laughs> Sounds funny. This truck is kind of neat in that it has disc brakes on the rear. And one thing that I've learned is that when a vehicle has disc brakes on the rear, then the rear brake rotor is also a brake drum. Take a look at that. These are hideous brake shoes. And the reason why these are here is for the emergency brake. These brakes are just shot. So I'm going to be replacing those. And I've got my parts right here and I'm going to make all of this stuff nice and new. Taking these apart is going to be very similar to the way that I do it with regular drum brakes. You remove the springs and use a screwdriver to get a little bit of lift under that spring so that I could use my brake pliers to get under it and get the hook and then just pull that off. There we go. We can hook that. There we go. And now we got that out. Now I need to get these clips out. Let's see if I can use the screwdriver here. Okay, you can see that I managed to maneuver it so that the pin is up in this wider area of the hole. And then, there we go. Clips off. Now I just need to do the same thing on the other side. Now under normal circumstances, once you've got the springs disconnected and those clips out of the way, the shoes should just fall out. But um, these are so rusted that they are actually part of my wheel hub right now. Let's uh, give it a tap. Oh, I think I, yeah, I think I did something there. I wonder if there's another spring. Oh wait, nope, nope. It's just really stuck in there. Wow, that is terrible. There's also these little pins, which honestly, it's amazing that there's anything left of these terrible things. Look at that. These just push through from the back. Look at that. Well, that's a mess. I'm going to clean it up with a wire brush the best as I can. Try and reveal the actual parts. Well, here's the actuator right here. And it goes in through a rubber gasket which is right in here, which prevents dirt from getting into the brake assembly. And then the back side has this, this hook here, so that when you push on the pedal in the driver's compartment, it pulls this cable this way. And then that pulls this lever and causes this thing to shift. Now I believe that it's supposed to pivot here, so I'm going to have to free that and make sure that it moves easily. So, this is a surprise. It turns out that this is actually two separate parts. So, yeah, uh, just a flat part like that and a flat part like this. So, yeah, learn something new every day. Amazingly enough, these are those two parts after taking them to my belt sander and my wire wheel. All right, now that is not beautiful, but it is much, much better. So at this point, I'm ready to start putting in the new parts. First thing I'm gonna do is put this hook assembly back in place. You can see how I've got the parts nested together and then the hook end just goes through here, making sure to go through that gasket that is in there, but I'm not sure that you can see. Ah, okay, I can see. There we go. And you can see how this small flat piece that I'm pointing to helps keep these two pieces together. So you can see how 
this hook back here, when the cable pulls on it, it's going to just move that actuator forward just like that and that is going to push those brake shoes up against the inside of that rotor and lock that wheel into place. So I've got my new parts here. These are replacement emergency brake shoes. And then this is a complete hardware kit for the emergency brakes, including the adjuster screws, the pins, and the springs. Now that I've got this hook assembly in place, I'm going to put the left brake shoe in place, just like that. Now I'm going to put in the pin and the clip. The pin will go back through this plate here and come out through that hole. And then it's going to go through the back of this clip and through that slot there and then I just need to rotate it to put it into place. These, these clips are always kind of a pain to get on. Uh, I use a pair of needle nose pliers, compress the clip, and then grab the end of the pin with the pair of needle nose pliers and just give it a twist to lock it into place. To get the right hand shoe in place, I'm going to start by hooking the hole on the top with the large spring. And then holding it in place, I'm going to insert it into the slot here. And then I'm going to use my brake pliers to grab the other end of the spring and get it into the hole on the top of that brake shoe. And now it's time to attach the second pin and clip. Before you install the adjuster screw, you want to make sure that the screw is backed up all the way so that this thing can be as narrow as it possibly can go. Now also before putting that together, you also want to grease the screw. The parts kit that I came with came with some grease, so I'm going to use that. And I'll just work that into the threads. Nice. The adjuster cylinder installs with these notches going right in between the brake pads here and the gear on the left hand side here. There is a rubber gasket in the back of the plate right here that's going to need to come out. You can just push it out with a screwdriver. There we go. So you might be wondering why you'd want to open up a hole right behind your adjuster screw. After I install everything and put the rotor back in place, I can stick a screwdriver through the slot and rotate the screw to adjust the tension on the brake. So the next piece to put into place is the small spring. I'm going to hook the bottom hole on the left brake shoe first, just like that, and then using my brake pliers I'm going to hook the same hole on the right brake shoe. There we go. So now we're good. All right, I got my nice shiny new rotor. And of course, I need to clean both the inside and the outside, front and back, with brake parts cleaner to get off that thin layer of oil that they put on there to keep it from rusting. Now, we'll just put this onto the hub. I do need to connect the cable back here and also connect this here. There we go. So uh, right now I'm not able to rotate the hub. When I try to rotate the hub, it is turning the axle. It's hard to do one-handed. So that tells me that my four-wheel drive seems to be engaged, which means that I can't adjust that adjuster screw until I get that tire 
off of the ground. Nonetheless, you can see the adjuster screw through this hole and what you're going to do is you're going to use a straight screwdriver, go in through the hole and then just adjust that gear until you know that the pads are locking this into, into place and then back it off so that the hub can move freely without scraping on the inside and then test it by setting the emergency brake, coming back, making sure that the wheel doesn't move and at that point it'll be adjusted and your emergency brakes will be fixed. So once that's adjusted, don't just put the wheel on. You've got that little rubber plug that goes in that hole. Do not forget to put that plug in or you will get dirt inside your brake assembly. So there you go. That is how to service the emergency brakes on a vehicle that has discs on the rear wheels of the vehicle. And please, actually do it at least sometime in the 17 years of the life of the vehicle. Please.